Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Minerva Inwald. I am Judith Nielsen Postdoctoral Fellow in Contemporary Art at the University of New South Wales. Um, and I am also the Seminars Officer for the Australian Society for Asian Humanities. Before we start today, I just want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which I am on, the Wongal people. Uh, pay my respects to elders past, present and future, as well as pay my respects to uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who are joining us for this talk today. Um, so thank you everyone for coming to this event um, that's organized by the Australian Society for Asian Humanities, the China Studies Center at the University of Sydney, the Department of Chinese Studies at the University of Sydney, and the UNSW Faculty of Art and uh, Art Design and Architecture. Um, I'm now going to hand over to uh, my colleague Josh Stenberg from the Department of Chinese Studies at Sydney University, who will introduce our speaker today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minerva. And I believe this is the um, last event, both for our department and for the seminar series that Minerva has organized uh, this year. And it's really exciting um, to be able to welcome such an interesting uh, speaker uh, for this event. So the speaker is uh, Dr. Rick Chi Lin Tao. Um, he is a lecturer of translation studies at Monash University. He completed his PhD research at Monash in 2015 on Australia's prestigious APA IPRS scholarship. And his current research interests include all aspects of literary translation theory and practice with a special focus on English translations of Chinese literature and on the reception of Australian literature in China through translation. He's the author of Jinping Mei English Translations, uh, which was uh, which came out in 2018. And just last year, he was the co-editor of uh, A Century of Chinese Literature in Translation, English Publication and Reception. Um, he contributes a lot to uh, literary, trans uh, literary translation studies in uh, Australia. He's a committee member of uh, the Australian Association for Literary Translation. Um, and uh, today, he'll be talking to us um, about uh, an area that is very close to my heart, uh, namely the uh, intersection, I believe, between uh, performing arts and diplomacy during uh, the PRC era. But I will let him um, elaborate uh, on his talk. Uh, uh, Dr. Chi will speak for um, up to 40, 45 minutes, and will I think he's uh, happy to take um, uh, Q&A at the end. Please feel free to put your uh, comments and questions in the Q&A or in the chat. Uh, without further ado, over to you. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for your um, kind introduction. And I'm glad to be here to uh, share with you guys the my research on this, the one here to go. Um, and um, let me share my screen. So when we're talking about uh, ballet diplomacy, um, I mean, in the Chinese context, uh, there are um, two actually um, different ballets they're talking about. Uh, as you can see from the slide on the left, it's a Japanese ballet adaptation of um, the Chinese uh, uh, folk tale. And on the right is the Chinese version of the ballet diplomacy because they uh, have also produced uh, uh, a version, a ballet version uh, from this story. Uh, and uh, in the talk today, I uh, will focus on um, the Japanese ballet adaptation. So usually one would not normally expect a, a group of artists to sing the national anthem of the country they are visiting. And when this happens, they are apparently more political than artistic implications. In 2017, Japan's um, Matsuyama Ballet Troupe sang the Chinese national anthem together with the audience in Shanghai after performing the White Hair to Go in celebration of the 45th anniversary of the normalization of China-Japan relations. And then again in February 2020, when China was fighting against the novel coronavirus outbreak in the city of Wuhan, Matsuyama Ballet Troupe recorded a video in Tokyo featuring its members singing the Chinese national anthem again as a way to show its moral support for the Chinese people. 
Matsuyama Ballet Troupe was founded in Tokyo in 1948 by ballet dancer Mikiko um, Matsuyama and her husband, uh, Maso Shimizu. It grew to be a leading ballet troupe in Japan with a worldwide reputation. Uh, in China, the name Matsuyama Ballet has been closely connected since the late 1950s with the white haired girl, which is the Chinese revolutionary folktale. Um, Matsuyama Ballet Troupe was the first in the world to adapt the folktale into a ballet, which was then reintroduced into China um, even before the Sino Japan diplomatic relations uh, was established in 1972. In the absence of political contact between the two countries, Matsuyama uh, Ballet was invited to perform in China on a very regular basis, which was often facilitated by political forces from both sides. It thus served as a rare form of a semi-official cultural diplomacy during a period, period of um, ostensibly deep political tensions between the nations in the post-war age. Um, in this talk, I will investigate the role of political agency in the Japanese adaptation of the white-haired girl, including how the ballet adaptation has been initiated, circulated, and received since the 1950s. Uh, I understand people from uh, all different uh, backgrounds, and my own background is translation studies. Uh, which is uh, not necessarily um, familiar to everybody. So I try to um, keep the theoretical analysis to a minimum um, and focus on constructing the, um, the story by, um, well, from the perspective of political agency. The White Hill Girl is one of the best known communist, uh, communist operas. It was originally staged in Yan'an in 1945 to an audience attending the seventh National Congress of the Communist Party of China. The opera was um, said to be based on true stories describing the life of a peasant girl named Xiar, who lived uh, a miserable life with her father and the oppression of uh, a wicked landlord named Huang Shiren. On the pretext of collecting rent, Huang contrived to drive Xiar's father to commit suicide, and he then raped Xiar. Uh, Xiar subsequently fled into the mountains and lived in the wild. Her hair gradually turned white because she had no salt in her diet. I'm mean, not sure whether there is any scientific basis for the theory, but that's how the folk belief explained the girl's change of hair color. She lived on the sacrifices in the local temple um, in the mountains and the superstitious villagers who accidentally caught sight of her believed she was a goddess. So the white haired goddess continued to live in the mountains until her fiance, uh, Da Chun, returned to liberate the village as a soldier in the communist Aisu uh, army, Ba Lu Jun. The liberato foreground class struggle between peasants and landlords in the old society, which forms a contrast with the new society as established by the Chinese Communist Party, in which the people were said to become masters of their own destiny. The central theme of the story, in the words of the opera, is that the old society changed the men into ghosts, while the new society changes ghosts into men. The opera was a sensational success. Its um, artistic portrayal of the peasant landlord conflict was so accurate that one soldier, while watching the performance, aimed the, his gun uh, at the actor who performed the landlord. The popularity of the opera resulted in the story's selection for film adaptation shortly after the founding of the People's Republic of China in 1949. As one of the earliest films produced in communist China, The White Haired Girl was screened in uh, many politically sympathizing countries uh, during the Cold War and became a prize winner in 1951. 
um, at a film festival in the, in, um, Czechoslovakia. However, its most resonant circulation with the most far-reaching influence was arguably the 1955 ballet adaptation produced in Japan. After the Second World War, Japan was occupied by the US and its uh, foreign relations um, to a large extent mirrored that of occupying US as well. For example, Japan was forced by US politicians to support the Republic of China in Taiwan and not do any business with the People's Republic of China. In this political climate, official trade and cultural exchanges between Japan and China were practically non-existent in the years following 1949. In 1952, China made an important effort to invite three Japanese Diet members to visit Beijing on their trip to Moscow uh, for the International Economic Conferences, which, which was designed to um, promote the trade relations between the socialist and the capitalist blocs. The US aligned the Japanese government at the time tried to prevent the three parliamentarians from traveling to Moscow or to Beijing by refuse, refusing them passports. On the false grounds of visiting European countries for cultural or agricultural exchange, the three Diet members were eventually able to leave Japan and subsequently went to Beijing by way of, of course, Europe. Um, that's against the explicit instruction of the Japanese government. In Beijing, they signed the first non-official trade agreement with the China, with the China Council um, for the promotion of international trade and returned to Japan bearing the Chinese film the white-haired girl as a gift from the then Chinese premier Zhou Enlai. The film was, however, intercepted at um, um, Haneda Airport and uh, Hoashi K uh, was not able to retrieve it until three months later when he promised that the film will not be uh, screened publicly. Afterwards, the film was handed over to the Japan-China Friendship Association, uh, of which uh, Hoashi K was an executive, um, just for private screening. So confronted with the explicit and public opposition um, of the Japanese government, the Chinese politicians and the three Japanese uh, parliamentarians worked together to bring the white haired goal to the Japanese soil, starting its journey of cultural diplomacy. In late 1952, uh, Maso Shimizu watched one such private screening of the film, very fortuitously in Tokyo. He was uh, deeply moved by the film and then recommended it to his ban um, ballerina wife, uh, Mekiko Matsuyama, and then to their colleagues in the Matsuyama Ballet Troupe. The couple felt that the film resonated with the Japanese society, which was at the time occupied by the US Army with the lands of many farmers commandeered for the establishment of military bases. In addition to the atrocities, including rape and murder committed by uh, US, US soldiers. Um, Matsuyama also considered the film a good demonstration of the theme of women's liberation, which was also topical in Japan at the time. So the couple decided to adapt the Chinese story into a ballet, um, but the thing was there was no other text available in Japan that they could um, use to draft their adaptation. So Schmidt tried writing to the Communist Party-led China Theatre Association, in late 1953, they received a reply from the chairman of the association, Qian Han, who supplied them with the script, the music score, and some stage photos of the opera, The White-Haired Girl. With this material and practical support from um, the source culture, 
Schmidt started the Japanese adaptation. Their ballet adaptation um, premiered in Tokyo in February 1955 to an audience comprising mostly young students and workers. Between 55 and 1958, Matsuyama Ballet staged about 40 performances of the one here go, uh, across Japan, uh, attended mainly by students and working class demographics such as the minors. Um, Matsuyama's adaptation brought the traditionally highbrow ballet to the ordinary Japanese people and was thus welcomed by many, but it also aroused much controversy in Japan. The Korean War marked a significant deterioration in the relationship between the US and China. And in occupied Japan, um, Douglas MacArthur's general headquarters launched a crackdown on the Communist Party of Japan and its sympathizers. The so-called Red Purge caused widespread fear of communism in Japan. As a result, any individuals or any organizations that were related to China were labeled communists. And Matsuyama in this context became an outcast in the ballet circle in Japan. Um, the anti-communist policy of occupied Japan, therefore, had direct consequences for the reception of their ballet version of the one-haired goal. In China, um, compared with the polarized reception um, of the ballet in Japan, um, it met with a singularly positive reception. Um, predictably, communist China lost no time uh, in congratulating Matsuyama's ballet on their adaptation, uh, on their adaptation of the Chinese story. Uh, Mikiko Matsuyama received a cable on the eve of the premiere from Ouyang Yuqian, who was uh, vice chairman of the China Theatre Association and the president of China uh, Central Academy of Drama. In that cabled message, um, which was um, published in state-run media as well, uh, Ouyang Yuqian reaffirmed the documentary support the Chinese theater circle had provided for their Japanese adaptation and predicted that Matsuyama's performance of the Chinese work would further the solidarity and friendship between the two peoples. A few months after the 1955 premiere of The White-Haired Girl, Matsuyama attended a World Peace Congress in Helsinki. Um, there she met Guo Moruo, head of the Chinese delegation, and was invited to visit Beijing. And in Beijing, she was introduced to Premier Zhou Enlai as the white-haired girl from Japan. Zhou Enlai extended his invitation for Matsuyama ballet troupe to perform in China. And therefore, um, the ballet troupe visited China um, in 1958 for the first time. The Japanese government was not happy about their trip to China. Um, Maso Shimizu, for example, did not receive his passport until the day before their scheduled departure. But there were a lot of unofficial supports from the Japanese communities. The Japan-China Friendship Association held a grand farewell party for the ballet troupe, which was attended by nearly 200 guests, including the former premier, um, Tetsukata, um, Tetsukatayama. Um, and um, the president of the Japan-China Cultural Exchange Association also personally went to the port of Yokohama um, to see the troop off. And when the group arrived in Beijing, they were welcomed at the train station by several artists, including um, Tian Han and Ouyang Yuqian, who were also um, the, the leader or the head of various communist party-led organizations. Matsuyama Ballet Troops' uh, first visit to China in 1958 lasted for nearly two months. They staged 28 performances in Beijing 
Chongqing, Wuhan, and Shanghai, sometimes to audiences of, all, of over 10,000 people, which um, Marcel Schmidt said was spec spectacular for ballet performance um, to an audience of over 10,000 people. At the time, dance schools in China had classes in classical ballet, but uh, there was not yet any ballet locally created on the basis of Chinese stories. So there was a widespread curiosity about Matsuyama's adaptation. Um, their adaptation was therefore widely heralded uh, as an artistic success by the Chinese audience. Um, the background was that uh, since 1955, China had entered a period of rapid development in communist arts and literature, acting upon the principles famously put forward by Chairman Mao Zedong, um, including let a hundred flowers bloom and a hundred schools of thought contend, uh, as well as make the past serve the present and make the foreign serve China. The ballet adaptation of the white-haired girl was in every aspect um, a perfect, perfect example of how the foreign could serve China in artistic forms. For the Chinese government, which was at the time um, not recognized by the Western countries, to promote the ballet adaptation by a foreign company based on a Chinese story is at the same time a means to convince its own people that China um, has been artistically recognized or endorsed by foreign countries, and also to demonstrate to the international community that it is open to exchange with the outside world. As such, the performance tour of Matsuyama Ballet in China provided the Chinese side with the stage to send the political messages to its domestic and international audiences. Uh, in Beijing, uh, Guo Moruo and Vice Premier Chen Yi and many other politicians and artists that watched the performances. Um, stage, provincial and local newspapers published the news reports, paintings, poems and reviews by Chinese artists about Matsuyama's ballet adaptation. The Chinese state newspaper People's Daily, which was um, uh, and still is a platform for messages of national importance, actually heralded reports on the ballet troops movement from one city to another during their visit. The protection the Japanese performers received on their tour was yet another indicator of the heightened political nature of the cultural event. Hostility to the Japanese among ordinary citizens in China was still very widespread at the time um, due to the atrocities committed by the Japanese soldiers in the 1930s and 1940s. So the officials who arranged Matsuyama's performances had to remind the locals that uh, these Japanese are good people and they should be welcomed um, as recorded by uh, Maso um, Schmidt in his memoir. Additionally, um, as he recalls, the Japanese ballet troupe was also under the constant protection of uh, armed soldiers from the People's Liberation Army uh, during their tour. Matsuyama ballet troupe has since then, since 1958, visited China uh, nearly 20 times, and therefore becomes uh, a regular presence in China, the cultural scene. During, during the Cultural Revolution, and that is between 1966 and 1976, exchange between China and the outside world was uh, seriously interrupted. And visits to China by foreign art groups were extremely rare. However, Matsuyama's performance tours were not disrupted. And in fact, they have uh, made repeated trips to China in 1964, 66, 1971, 73, and then 77 and 78. So the ballet adaptation of the white haired girl made Matsuyama ballet a household name in China since the late 1950s. 
ordinary theater goers in China um, may have been amazed by their performance, admired their contribution to the art of ballet, and been impressed with the, how a Chinese story can be translated transmedially. But the Chinese politicians, of course, found in the ballet troupe an ideal and a willing candidate to carry out their mission of cultural diplomacy. Matsuyama's ballet visited North Korea after performing in Beijing in 1964. And the troop was, uh, were supposed to uh, take, the, take a train to Harbin uh, following their visit in Pyongyang. However, uh, without any prior knowledge, the ballet troop was uh, um, sent to the airport in Pyongyang where a Chinese airplane took them back to Beijing. It turned out that um, Chairman Mao Zedong wanted to watch their performance and together with the, some foreign leaders on state visit to China at the time. When they returned to Beijing, Shimizu uh, expressed his um, gratitude to Mao Zedong for flying them from Pyongyang to Beijing and Mao replied, um, well, my government is prepared to send an airplane at any time if Matsuyama Valley Troop requires it. Shimizu's memoir suggests that such meetings with Chinese politicians rendered him and the others uh, in his troop into even stouter supporters and advocates for Japan-China friendship. It is worth noting that during the Cultural Revolution, only the so-called um, eight rev revolutionary model plays, Bagge Yang Ban Xi, were permitted to be publicly performed. That number, of course, grew to 18 when the movement ended in 1976 but that's still a limited number of plays that became the only theatrical entertainment for the entire population of China for about 10 years. While most of the model plays were in the form, form of picking opera, there were two ballets, including the white haired girl. And the adoption of ballet as a form of revolutionary theater by the Chinese was undoubtedly inspired by Matsuyama's Japanese adaptation. When Mao Zedong met with the Matsuyama ballet dancers uh, in 1964, he mentioned their artistic achievements by referring them, um, referring to them as teachers in creatively employ, um, employing foreign art forms to tell contemporary stories. Um, as um, mentioned earlier, China was at the time waging uh, a campaign to reform classical arts and modernize uh, Peking opera. Matsuyama ballet, ballet adaptation of the White Hair Girl actually made them pioneers of dramatic innovation, a model of success for their Chinese colleagues. Um, John Lai was pretty explicit in his acknowledgement. He said it was not us, but um, Mikiko Matsuyama and the Matsuyama Ballet Troupe who first reformed the ballet by bringing the white hair girl to the stage. And for this, we should uh, learn from them and remain thankful to them. In 1964, when Matsuyama Ballet Troupe visited China for the second time, uh, the Shanghai Dance School staged their own ballet version of the white hair girl which, uh, as mentioned above, uh, grew to be one of the eight model plays when the Cultural Revolution began in 1966. Matsuyama adapted the Chinese Revolutionary Opera into ballet, but unusually, its major impact was to be found not in its target context of Japan, but in the source culture of China. The, Japanese ballet adaptation of the white hair girl attracted um, rather limited and sometimes hostile attention uh, in, in its intended target culture in Japan. In contrast, the adaptation was not only positively received in the source context, uh, it also interacted more meaningfully with the audience from the source culture. 
Notwithstanding the geographical and the cultural proximity of China and Japan, the Japanese ballet was constantly modified from the time it was first um, introduced to Chinese viewers. During their first performance tour in China in 1958, they received a comment about the male player's ballet shoes. The advice um, received from the Chinese audience was that in China, the only occasion when men wore white shoes was for funerals. So the Japanese dancers acted immediately um, by painting their white shoes black before their next performance. And the two countries also differ in how love should be expressed theatrically. In the Chinese source text, Xia, the father, uh, unable to afford anything more opulent, gave her a length of red yarn as a gift with which to braid her hair. This scene um, of parental love was recast in the Japanese ballet into a love affair between Xia and her neighbor and fiance, Da Chun. Da Chun gave the red yarn to Xia as a token of love. Although love marriage was advocated as the new norm in the communist China, the traditional idea that a love relationship could only be entered into by command of parents or through good offices of go between was still ingrained in Chinese society at the time. So based on the Chinese viewers' reactions, Matsuyama made changes to the ballet and in subsequent performances, the red yarn was given to Xia by Da Chun's mother, uh, not as a token of love, but as the, a symbol of class solid solidarity between poor peasants. In this case, the Chinese audience, far from being passively recipients um, posited by traditional theater studies, became indirect agents of change in the Japanese ballet. In order to best appreciate the unusual involvement of political agency in the consumption of the Japanese ballet, the phenomenon needs to be examined diachronically in the context of um, the China-Japan relationship. In 1972, following US President Richard Nixon's visit to China, the Japan-China relationship um, were promptly normalized soon after. So Matsuyama Ballet Troupe, which had been um, leveraged by the Chinese leadership for cultural diplomacy in the absence of diplomatic relations between the two countries, may be said to have, the, have its uh, mission completed by 1972. Um, therefore, comparing the treatment they received on their performance tours before and after 1972, um, will be interesting and illuminating in that regard. In 1976, um, after consuming the Chinese political and social life for a decade, the Cultural Revolution concluded. And in the same year, China lost several key political figures, including Mao Zedong and Zhou Enlai. A major reshuffle ensued, preeminently with the downfall uh, of the Game of Four. Um, in the context of these large scale social, socio historical developments, Matsuyama Ballet Troop found the privileges they had enjoyed on previous visits rapidly diminishing as well. On their previous trips to China, the Japanese dancers were always escorted um, by their Chinese colleagues. For example, in 1971, a total of 180 Chinese artists, including the orchestra from Shanghai Dance School, accompanied the Japanese visitors for the whole duration of their tour in China. A dedicated train with 16 carriages, including two dining cars, uh, was prepared for the sole purpose of moving the troop between Chinese cities. By contrast, on the 1978 visit, the Japanese ballet troupe were informed by the Chinese side that it was not feasible to provide transport for a group of nearly 200 
and that this time no orchestra will be ex escorting them on their tour. Uh, the ballet dancers therefore had to use public transport and manage their heavy luggage on their own. Uh, Schmidt wrote in his memoir that this was anticipated as China moved out of the Cultural Revolution, but he somehow uh, found it inconvenient. Without an accompanying orchestra, the troupe had to rehearse with local bands for each performance stop. And there was predictably no shortage of issues in terms of uh, coordination and cooperation. The diminishing privilege after the normalization of bilateral relations is eloquent evidence for how politically charged China's invitation had been in its former dealings with the Japanese ballet troupe. However, the changes in treatment did not mean Matsuyama ballet troupe ceased to be of any value to the Chinese cultural diplomacy after 1976. Instead, the fulfillment of its initial mission won the ballet company considerable symbolic capital of being witness and contributor to evolving Japan-China relations. In the following decades, the Japanese ballet troupe continued to visit China every few years, particularly on occasions commemorating uh, important historical moments and events. For example, it toured China in 1992 and 2017 in celebration of the 20th and 45th anniversary of the uh, rapprochement between the two countries. Um, consumption of the ballet uh, in Japan was similarly not motivated by primarily cultural factors, but rather facilitated by political agents. The white-haired girl was uh, usually performed to an audience featuring officials from government agencies or activists from institutions committed to Japan-China relations. This included the Chinese ambassadors in, to Japan, uh, parliamentarians, and um, the uh, Empress Michiko uh, of Japan. Empress Michiko um, watched the white haired go um, on multiple occasions. In 1992, uh, when she returned from a, a trip to China um, with, Emperor, with the Emperor. Akihito, uh, Michiko thanked Shimizu personally for his contribution to Japan-China friendship by choreographing the white-haired girl and performing age um, extensively in, in China. Performances of, um, um, performances of Matsuyama Ballet Troupe have been attended by every generation of communist leaders in China including the current Chinese president Xi Jinping when he visited Japan in 2009 as the vice president of China. Shimizu has personally been invited to visit China over 100 times since 1958. And in 2004, uh, he won the Cultural Exchange Contribution Award from the Chinese Ministry of Culture. Schmitz and the dancers of the Matsuyama Ballet Troupe have never really become political figures in Japan. But at a time when the normal political channels between Japan and China were frozen, the artist's identity turned them into convenient agents of politics. When the Chinese official, officials saw the diplomatic potential in their ballet adaptation, the ballet troupe acquired an elevated status in China that they would never enjoy in their home country, which was not based primarily on the artistic merits of their performance. The legacy of Matsuyama lives on. Both Schmidt and um, uh, Matsuyama have now passed away, and the ballet troupe is currently led by their son, uh, Tetz Talo Schmidt and his wife. Uh, who is an internationally uh, renowned ballerina, um, Yoko uh, Morishita. The ballet troupe retains its political connection with China 
they have sung, as mentioned at the beginning of this talk, uh, the Chinese national anthem on stage on various occasions. And they are pretty explicit in their hope to perform white hair to go again in China when the pandemic is over, uh, in order to, uh, in their own words, keep contributing to the Japan-China friendship and to keep contributing to world peace through their artistic activities. Um, thank you very much. I think that's uh, what I have time for.